Thanks for tuning in to watch The Ordinary Filmmaker. It's Friday, January the 7th, 2022, and CES is about to come to an end, and that's good news if you're looking for camera news. Why? Well, because the big camera makers, Nikon, Sony, Canon, Panasonic, and others, generally don't do anything at CES. They usually wait for at least a week afterwards before they start making announcements. So second week of January leading up to CP Plus is generally a big time when we can expect some announcements. So stay tuned. But there is something that I did pick up a couple of days ago from Canon News. And I didn't deal, you know, patents can be a little bit boring and it takes a while to go through them and to actually look for some goodness. You see, Canon News was referring to a patent that talks about improving autofocus sensitivity when you've got the camera in a different orientation, other than, you know, the standard orientation. If you remember back with DSLRs, we had cross-focus autofocus. And, well, Canon is bringing that, and what that will do is improve autofocus sensitivity. So that's good news, and when I first reviewed this patent filing, I thought, okay, I saw all the diagrams, all the drawings, as you're seeing them here while I talk, and I thought, yeah, this is nice, but this is not big enough news to cause me to come down into my studio and to produce a video and expect you to even watch it. But then looking a little closer at the diagrams, as you can see here, this is a sensor diagram where we can see it's using a standard bare filter, which is an RGB, or as I like to call them, an RGGB filter. Why do I call it an RGGB filter? Well, it's because it has a red, blue, and two green photosites for sensing the light. And how our eyes work is very similar to how a camera works. So right at the front of our eye, we have a lens that focuses the light into the back of our eye where we have cones and rods, and that functions as our sensor. The rods, well, they help detect low light and help us be able to see when the sun starts to drop, although we lose a lot of color information. And I'm not going to talk about the rods anymore. Now we're, let's talk about the cones. And the cones are set up much like camera sensor where we have red, green, and blue. So we have cones, they're not red, they're not green, they're not blue, but they're sensitive to red light. We have cones that are sensitive to blue light and cones that are sensitive to green light. And when the brain captures this information, it's able to bring those colors together. And that's why we can see colors that are not just red, green, and blue, but cyan, purple, magenta, and all those other different color variations. Now a sensor works much the same way but it's arranged in a group of four. And we have red, green, green, blue. And you might be wondering, well, why do we have two greens? Well, Bear, the guy who came up with the Bear filter, looked at a lot of images and he studied it. And what he realized is that, well, by providing more light sensitivity to green, we're gonna end up with better results. And that's what we have in most of our cameras, unless you're talking about Fuji. Fuji has what is known as an RGBW filter. So let's go back to the bare filter. If you're taking a picture of something that's largely blue and you're in daylight, you're okay. But if you're in sort of low light situations, all you have on an 8-bit camera, you only have 8 bits to represent blue. The green or the two greens and the red aren't really going to pull in much information. Now, if it's not a blue, if it's kind of a color that uses some blue as well as red and green, then you're going to get better results. But the same for red. If you're taking a picture of something that's largely red, you only have eight bits of information to capture that. Now, again, with RAW and other cameras, you can have more than eight bits, but still, you are limited. Now, with green on an eight-bit system, you have twice the amount of information. So why is this important? Then I'm going to get into what's significant about this patent filing. It's all about low light sensitivity. It's about color accuracy. When dealing with low light, if you've only got a narrow bit of information to be able to capture that color data, well, what generally happens? That's right, you end up with more noise, right? And of course, your color accuracy can go off a little bit when using an RGGB filter versus an RGBW filter. And there's plenty of studies out there, there's plenty of videos that go in depth talking about the differences between an RGBW filter on a sensor versus an RGB or an RGGB filter on a sensor. So going back to this patent filing, if you take a look right here, this is just a standard RGGB bare filter on a sensor. And that's figure five. But if we go down a little further to figure six, look at this. Canon is talking about an RGBW filter on their sensor. Could this be significant? 
Well, it certainly can. I would expect a feature like this to come out in more professional level cameras, like the R1, for example, like the R5, the R3, and not the 90D or not one of the Rebel series cameras. And let's not get into that DSLR versus mirrorless. We know where all that's going. I just want to talk about the RGGB versus the RGBW sensor or the filter on the sensor. So if we are able to take this and put it into a camera, well, what will happen is when we're in low light, we're going to get better color representation and we're going to have less noise. And that's a good thing. However, why is, if this is good, why don't more cameras have it? Well, you see, the bear filter's been working really good for so long. Take a look at your photos. You, you've got a Canon R5, a Canon R3, or you've got a really good Sony, a Sony Alpha 1, or you've got the Nikon Z9, you're going like, yeah, these photos look pretty good, and they do. And it takes a lot of money to R&D, and there's so many things that camera companies have been racing towards is higher megapixels, faster frame rates, higher resolutions, 8K video. Nobody's really clamoring for this. Um, the, the, again, if you're in low light, this is where you're going to notice the biggest difference. If you're shooting in normal light or bright light, it's not a huge difference. Although, with an RGBW sensor, it is better and more sensitive to light, even in bright conditions where it can be about... Um, 3 dB plus signal-to-noise ratio, and in low-light situations, you're looking at about 6 dB signal-to-noise ratio improvement. So it, there are definite improvements. The question is, when are we going to see this? Now, the patent also talks about quad-pixel autofocus. We, we know there's a patent filing for quad-pixel autofocus. We haven't seen it yet. There's doubt as to whether we'll see this in the Canon R1. So we might see quad-pixel autofocus, and we might also see an RGBW filter on a sensor. But, and I'm sure that Sony, Nikon, Panasonic, all the companies are looking into this. But it's getting it to work. Uh, the bare filter works really, really well. There are so many priorities that a development team must look at and prioritize as these are the best capabilities that we can deliver to our customers to generate more money so we can invest more in R&D to generate more capabilities or enhancements to capabilities so we can release it to our customers and generate more money. It's stuck a constant cycle. So an RGBW sensor does work well. Some early iterations of this didn't work as well. Some of them lost resolution or some of them had other issues. But we've also seen this with how cameras improved dramatically over the last 10 years, solving a lot of problems. The same thing is going on with the RGBW filter on the sensor. The good news is that Canon is working towards this, and when they do release it, it is going to result in better color representation and less noise in low-light situations. And that is definitely a very, very good thing. So when I first looked at this patent filing, I thought, mm, yeah, big deal. So we're bringing back an old technology that we had with DSLRs, cross-diagonal autofocus points um, on the dual-pixel autofocus system, and now we're, we're bringing it back to the mirrorless sensors. And okay, great, not a big deal. But the idea that they're also working on an RGBW filter for the sensors? That is very much interesting. But that's it for now. Thank you so much for watching. Oh, one last thing, if I could ask a favor. If you're still watching, please do me a favor and subscribe and like. Uh, it really does help this channel grow, but also for me, uh, I take it as a virtual pat on the back, and I very much appreciate it. But that's it for now. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you again soon.